Welcome to Chalk Talk, Dambo Public Schools Weekly News Magazine. I'm Diane Locker, your host. We're here at Galileo Magnet High School this week because of another award that they have picked up, and that has to do with financial literacy. I think it's very important when you think about what happens later on in life, the things that we have to do, how we can just write a check, go to the bank, do those types of things. And that's what we're going to be talking about here and how they handle those things here at Galileo. I have Joyce Cully with me, who is our financial literacy teacher. Now, Joyce, it's my understanding that all high schools teach some type of finance. That's correct. The state of Virginia now requires that students have one credit of finance before they graduate. It is a requirement for graduation. So it's a, it's a graduation requirement. Now, yes. financial literacy, as it's being taught here at Galileo, you're using a program called the WISE Financial Literacy Program. That is our testing program. Once the students complete the class, we actually test the students using a national organization. Uh, they are in 43 different states. We use their testing agent to determine how well our students are doing. Now, I may have my numbers wrong here, but didn't you kind of like come in sixth in the nation uh, in t the highest test scores? Yes. Uh, when you compare Galileo to 43 other uh, states, uh, schools that are participating in WISE, we place sixth in the nation and we place third for small high schools. So our students have done very well. We're very proud of them. Now, you also had the opportunity yourself to go to New York. Now, tell me a little bit about that. Um, what happened was they an all-expense-paid trip for me and Mr. Lancaster, who's the principal here, to go to New York to the Federal Reserve to actually receive the award that our students won. That's amazing. It really is. Now, we're going to be talking with some of the students today. And now tell me, are there any requirements for a student to sign up for this course? No requirements. It is, as I said before, a requirement for graduation. So all students uh, enrolled in a Virginia high school have to complete the class, just like an English unit, uh, science, math, finance is required, and it is a graduation requirement. Is it part of the SOLs? No, it's not. Why serves uh, kind of as our SOL testing agent for the finance class. I was looking at their particular website, and two things came out that kind of surprised me. Mm -hmm. One of them, they said that a l most students don't drop out of college because of their grades, it's because of personal finance. Is, is that true? That is true. And that's one of the uh, units that we do cover in the class is understanding college, um, two-year college versus four-year college. The expenses that you will assume understanding student loans and how you pay those back and how long it takes to pay them back. So students really, they don't just write checks and understand checking. They also work with investing. They work with insurance. And they work with understanding when I go to a four-year college, how much is it going to cost me? So we look at a lot of different avenues. There was another, another fact in there that that I don't dispute, I was just surprised at, that said that the majority of bankruptcies occur in people 18 to 25. Yes. That's very young. Yeah, very young. Um, and we're working in the classroom to ensure that students understand bankruptcy and how that affects their credit. So we are not only, as I said, just writing checks, we are giving them a broad range of information to take out the classroom that they can live with daily. It sounds like a practical course. I mean, it, it's like um, maybe in the past we thought if you passed the math classes and things <laughs> that you could you could do these things. Yes. And I think, you know, life in general has proved that you don't. That's true. And as I said, the class is an application class where what the students are learning, they can apply it to real life situations. Banks, bankruptcy, investing, insurance, determining should I buy that expensive sports car and pay the insurance on it or should I get something a little bit more conservative that I can pay everything the insurance the taxes all of that and not just the, the expensive sports car so it's a lot of things that factor into the classroom that the kids are learning and taking outside of the class a little bit later I'm going to be talking to some as students and in their experiences but you as the teacher when when they come into this class 
Uh, I'm not sure what they would be expecting to get out of this class, but are they surprised when you talk about what loans, when you talk about insurance, when you talk about especially bankruptcy? Because yes. bankruptcy at that age, 18 to 25, can affect the rest of your life. It can, and the students do understand. We go over how long it remains on your credit report, how it can hurt you, the bankruptcies can hurt you. But we also talk about other things that you can do, credit counseling, before you get to that point. So it's a lot of things that we do cover in the classroom. What we're going to do now, though, is I'm going to sit down, and I think we have three of your students here, and I'm going to see how they feel about the course. Okay, great. Thank you. When I spoke with Mrs. Culley a little bit earlier, she let me know that in total she has 84 students in her classes. They, could, they are different classes, but a total of 84 students. What I have here are four students representing those 84 students and I'm going to talk with those students about financial literacy and what it means to them and I'm going to start over here is it Magali yes. Magali would it before you started taking the class if I ask you to define financial literacy what would you have said to me I probably would have said I had no idea <laughs> now that you've been taking the class how would you define financial literacy? I define it as a way to be able to know how to manage your money appropriately to invest and save and have money for the future. Wow. Is that something that you as an individual were thinking about? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, how to handle money personally? Mm -hmm. Yes, because Miss Cully always taught us that when, when you get older, you don't want to be in debt. You always want to save your money, make sure you're going to have money, you know. So that's what it teaches you. Right. In this course, what particular things did you learn that would help you save money? Uh, we learned about, like, you know, when we get older, like the colleges that we want to go to, make sure they're affordable, make sure you, like, after you get out of college, you can pay the pay your debt, you know, so you won't, like, pay for your all the classes that you took that you couldn't pay for when you went to college. Now. Karan, I'm going to ask you, um, define for me, or could you define prior, prior to this course, the concept of bankruptcy? Well, the concept before I took finance, bankruptcy meant to me just being broke, not having money at all. Guess what? It is being broke. But now that you've had more and, and studied more about it, what, how would you define bankruptcy? still being broke but also still being in debt because not everything is taken away once you file for bankruptcy if you file for bankruptcy is that something that affects you just at the point that you file it how how much of a uh, uh, how much of your life is affected if you in the next couple of years file for bankruptcy well for the most part a whole lot of it but after a while, you can get back on track and start saving again and get in the um, good shape in life. Henry, had you written checks prior to have, taking this class? Uh, no, never. Never written a check? No, I, I don't How write. about now? Uh, I've written one check. Since. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, what was it for? Uh, it was for a pair of shorts. Good, good for you. Good for you. What a necessity, right? Mm, yes, it was was very necessary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Henry. If I ask you, what is the most important thing that you think you've gotten from this class? What would you say? Um, I think the most important thing I've gotten from the class would be managing your uh, finances and making sure that you aren't slipping into debt. Uh, just keeping track of everything you do. It's a very important concept, and there are a lot of adults wandering around out there that don't have that. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a very short break, and when we come back from the break, I'm going to continue talking to the students about financial literacy. Hello, my name is J.D. Edmonds, and this is my wife. Janine Edmonds. I am the Bond and Booster President, and I'm encouraging all you parents to get involved with your child's education, get involved with the community, and show your support for your kid's school. Continue to be that bridge between the community, school, and family.
Hello everyone, my name is Alexandra Reddy and I'm the Beta Club President here at Galileo Magnet High School. Let me tell you about Beta Club. Beta Club is a national academic club that focuses on community service and in fact our motto is let us lead by serving others. So every month the Beta Club here at Galileo completes a service project for our community and also for our school. And then in February, we travel to the state convention where we compete with other schools in the areas of English, science, social studies, talent competitions, and it's a really awesome experience. But I also have the honor of being the Virginia State Beta Club president, an election that I won back in February at the convention. So this means that I have to travel to at least two other state conventions this year. There's North Carolina, South Carolina, all across the country that I am able to travel to. So I'm very blessed to be the state president and I'm excited for what the year holds and making Galileo proud and making Virginia Beta proud. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm at Galileo Magnet High School and I'm with some students representing Mrs. Cully's financial literacy class. What I'm going to do now is and I want to have some more conversation with the students about different concepts of the class, but I'm going to hand the mic over to Mrs. Cully, the teacher, and let her talk a little bit about the things that are covered in a financial literacy class. Thank you, Ms. Locker. Uh, several of the aspects that we cover in the class include uh, investing, uh, retirement plans, we talk about annuities, we talk about savings bonds, we go over a lot for investing. Uh, in addition, we talk about insurance. You know, buying the big SUV or purchasing the smaller car, you may be able to afford the SUV, but can you afford the gas that goes in it? Can you inf afford the insurance that goes along with the SUV as opposed to the smaller car. We go over banks, uh, writing checks, depositing, uh, ensuring that you have your accounts covered. Um, we also talk about money management, setting up budgets, making sure that even at the age of 16, 17, 18, you have a budget established with your allowance, with you know the money that you are making. Um, we also talk about how you can now prepare for future, even with just a few dollars a week, saving that money and ensuring that for the long run, you have something to fall back on. We talk about also, it's not so much about the salary and the job that you want or the job that you take, but also what benefits do you get with that? Sometimes the benefits outweigh what the salary might be. So we go over a lot of things and we get the kids to kind of think and analyze, is it the $100,000 a year job that I want or is it the $60,000 a year job with the benefits? So we do go over a lot. We make the kids think, you know, it's not just about today, but in the long term, where do I want to be? Long-term goals, short-term goals, mediary goals. What do you want to do? I think that was very practical and very important. And I'd like to go back to the, what you said about learning how to write checks. In the first half of the show, we asked Henry about uh, had he ever written a check, and he wrote a check for shorts. And, and we laughed, and we thought that was funny. But it's really true that a lot of kids go off to college and that's the first time that they ever have to write a check, keep a bank account, and sometimes I think that's too late. And I think a class like this probably comes in there. Now, I'm going to start off with you, Karan. Tell me what you learned that you think is going to help you the most when you actually go out into life. Um, well, the concept of paying myself first, which means putting money in a bank account or just putting money aside in general, that way later on when I need it, I have access to it. I love that. Pay myself first. Is that what you said? The concept of paying yourself first. And I think that goes along with what Ms. Cully said about saving for the future. You know, when, when you're my age and you think back like when you first started teaching, um, it was the salary that seemed so important, not the retirement. But at this age, that retirement is wonderful. <laughs> now, what did you learn about, now you said pay yourself first. That's, how does that link into retirement of what you're going to do in the future, or do you even think that far into the future? 
have you even even thought about retirement? Um, with finance class, I have, but not in depth yet. No, ma'am. You're awfully young to be thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. How about you? What What do you think you're going to take from this class that's going to do you the most good? I think like when you get older, you'll think about how much money you have and how much you should put aside in a savings account. Just so you know, like if you fall out and you need money, like in emergencies, like somebody ha is in a hospital and you got to pay the hospital bills, you know what I'm saying? I know. And you got all you got that money, you could use it. Now, did you have a bank account prior to this class or and do you have one now? I don't have a bank account, but I do have a CD that my mom made me. A certificate of deposit. That's what it is. A lot of students your age wouldn't even know what a CD is. My mom tells me about it because she used to work at a credit union herself. In a conversation with the students, I asked the, the four students that was here, what, is, what do you think of this class? What do you think has been the way the class has been, um, let's say, conducted? And McGlory came up with some really good information about how she felt about how the class was taught. And McGlory, I'm going to ask you to repeat that for the audience. Uh, I said that I loved how we had do a lot of hands-on activities. We do a lot of the computer-based activities that kind of catch our attention. And then she, uh, Miss Cully always does a lot of open discussion. So we always get to go over things that we can't remember for a test. And she covers it over and over again. So it helps us remember a lot of important things for the future. A lot of it is technology-based, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. And that's definitely something that is part of your generation. Yeah. And if you're learning how to write checks, I'm assuming that you actually write checks in class? Oh, no. I don't, I've never written a check before. If, how, how do you, and I, would, I guess I should address you, Ms. Cully, if you're going to learn to write checks, how do you do that without actually, do they have practice checks or anything like that? We do have practice checks, and several banks, organizations have actually put together packets that the students can actually open the checking account, write the checking account, deposit money. So they go through actually writing checks, creating a deposit slip with checks and with money. So they go through the whole scenario uh, in class. In addition, the students use an, a program called EverFi that's provided to us by American National Bank. And that is an online program with several different modules that the students work through. And one of them is banking. And they do learn all of the different aspects of banking, including writing checks, making deposits. I think that would be very important because most of us, uh, I know I do, I do all my banking online. Um, and writing checks, even though we've talked a lot about it here today, you don't write a whole lot of checks anymore because of the fact of the debit cards, credit cards, and doing things online. What I want to do before we close on the show today is find out a little bit more about each of these students. I'm going to find out what it is that you want to do in the future. Now, I think you're all juniors. Is that correct? Sophomores. Sophomores. Okay. I'm going to start off with you. You're a junior. All right. Next year, you're going to be a senior. What happens then? I'm going to save up and go off to college. What do you want to do when you go off to college? I mean, what, do, what, what are your dreams? My dream is to become a lawyer. Okay. And I'm going to um, major in criminal justice and then work, with, work, at, uh, work hard and go off. Sounds good to me. How about you? Now, you're a junior. Mm -hmm. what, what do you want to do when you finish your senior year? Go off to college and study to be a forensic anthropologist. A forensic anthropologist. You really want to be on CSI, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Henry, you're a sophomore. Have you thought, you've got two more years, right? Have you thought much about what you want to do? For the next two years, I will probably be working on getting financial aid for college. That's what I learned out of this class. And how did you learn it out of the class? Is, was that one of the things that you, that you studied? Yes. Had you thought about financial aid for college before this class? Uh, yes, as a nebulous thought, but not as a concrete one. Now it's concrete. You get into college. What do you want to do when you get into college? Be a truck driver. Be a truck driver. You want to get a graduate degree in driving a truck? Yes. <laughs>
You're great, Henry. How about you, McGlory? I was thinking of business management and psychology as one of my majors for college. Very good. Very good. Uh, Ms. Collier, you are to be congratulated on the class. Just in talking to these students, they've got some idea about what's out there. There is some idea about retirement, and as Henry said, he now knows in, in a concrete way about getting financing for college. Um, you talk about um, you've already got a CD and thinking about the future. You even talked about retirement, and here you are um, just a, a junior. So it's made all of you think about the future. Before I close the show, I need to say one more thing about Galileo that has nothing to do with this finance class, and that is, once again, as an annual thing, U.S. News and World Report has named them as one of the top small high schools in the nation, and they got a silver award. So along with the Cadoos for our financial literacy, we're also talking about other awards that come to the school. We're very proud of Galileo. We're very proud of Mrs. Cully and, and the work that she's done with financial literacy. And there's no way we're not proud of the uh, four students that are sitting around me. I want to thank you for being with us this week, and I hope you'll come back next week to find out what we're doing in Danville Public Schools.